Two organizations working towards a common goal, ending racial injustice in Charleston. Local leaders tell me the best way to fuel potential action is to involve the community in the process. Finding a solution by first uncovering the root of the problem. Give us your perspective on how, how you think we got into this predicament in the first place. A huge need for affordable housing with a shortage of units, but the issue runs much deeper. We're not doing this uh, issue justice if we don't talk about the history of, of race and racism and systemic racism uh, in communities within Charleston. I mean, even today, like a the median household income for white families as of a couple of years ago in Charleston was that looked at today was $64,000 and it was $29,000 for black families. Recent data shows these racial disparities also run deep within the criminal justice system. When we talk about uh, the, the so-called front end of the justice system. News 2's Brad Franco moderating a forum with the Charleston County Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. Working to address those inequalities, strengthening jail diversions, and focusing on fairness and reentry. So, you know, just be vigilant, man, and, and, and know that, you know, we are here together and we are fighting, and, you know, we're going to figure out a way to kind of help a little bit more than what we already are doing. If you missed tonight's meetings, there will be more in the future. To find out how to tune in, you can check out the full story on our website, countonto.com. In Mount Pleasant, I'm Katie Turner, Count on Two.